everybody. Um, my name is Bill Riddle. Uh, I'm the Census uh, Director at Bluegrass Country Club, but I'm here this morning to introduce a, a good friend of mine, um, Lane Evans. He's going to be talking on the X's and O's of building fitness at your club. And, you know, and everybody can kind of read what um, is written there in the book about Lane. And he's an elite USPTA professional. He's a director of tennis and wellness, uh, which is sometimes hard to believe at Champion Hills Club uh, here in North Carolina. Um, but he's also our convention chairman. And uh, he's been a speaker at a number of different um, coaches' workshops and conventions from from down under to uh, up above. And, uh, you know, when we were talking about introducing speakers, uh, President Todd asked us to do, dig a little bit and find out some interesting facts. And fortunately, I was able to go on the, no, uh, he didn't. I was able to go on the World Wide Web and um, found uh, Lane's MySpace page and uh, was able to look at this up. He, he actually um, ended his college career playing tennis at High Point College uh, in, in North Carolina. But he started his college career at Low Point Community College uh, where he was in charge of tobacco for the girls' softball team, uh, which was kind of cool. And then we also found out that he was voted the uh, fifth sexiest man alive in the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, so, uh, very, very proud that. of that. So, That's a low bar. Uh, <laughs> welcome, Wayne Evans. Um, First of all, let me apologize for my voice. I'm not sure what happened. A little gremlins got me last night. I don't know. The air conditioner may have been too low, but uh, it sounds like I got a, a cold a little bit, but uh, I'll, I'll get through this as best I can. Um, as Bill pointed out, um, I am the director of tennis and wellness at my club, Champion Hills Club, in Hendersonville, uh, North Carolina. Um, we are a small tennis, we're, we're a, a private community. We have about a 280 membership club, golf community, retired community. Um, I've actually got a, a couple of uh, presentations that I've been doing of, of late. The first one I started doing, and the one I did down in Australia was called Building the Motor Come. And it's a, uh, it's a presentation about training and teaching seniors. Um, my demographic at my club is 65 plus, which is probably very unusual and, and probably unlike any, any of the other tennis pros in attendance this weekend. Um, as a matter of fact, all of Chuck's members come to my club in the, in the summertime. They go back to his club in the wintertime. Um, I've been uh, a tennis professional for uh, over 30 years. I have been a fitness uh, general manager for over 20 years. Uh, I was in California for a number of years managing uh, a very large athletic club. So I've been in and around the fitness industry uh, quite a while. Um, as we spoke, uh, as Chuck spoke this morning, one of the things that we are um, trying to do is bridge a relationship between the fitness industry and the tennis industry. Um, as we get, uh, as I look at this next slide, um, there is a trend growing, and I'll just stop right there. You mentioned, Rick, that you're interested in putting fitness in your club. Anybody else got fitness in their club right now? Um, how involved are you with it? What do you mean involved? Like, are you involved at all? Well, not before, but currently. I mean, we're going from 4,000 square feet to 22,000 square feet. So Big, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Um, anybody in here trained as a, as a fitness professional at all? Jane? Mm -hmm. Which, who are you? Uh, a tennis performance trainer with ICTS. Okay, okay. Um, there are a number of, of different um, uh, certification entities. I happen to be an ISA um, uh, certified fitness professional and a senior fitness specialist. I'm also working on my master certification with the ITPA. So um, the International Tennis Performance Association, is everybody familiar with that? Um, that is a, an organization that Mark Kovacs runs, um, and it is excellent. We are in the process of, of forging a relationship between the USPTA and the ITPA. It's almost done, and um, you'll get information about that. Those are, that's a, a great certification to have in tennis-specific science uh, and, and um, injury and injury uh, prevention. Um, 
One of the things this, this next slide is, is a little bit about, there's a trend growing across the country. I have several friends that are in this, uh, colleagues that, that are in this situation. I'm in it, Chuck's in it, uh, our Gary Trost, our, our friend in Oklahoma's in it, and there's a number, a a Andrew Manelli out in California uh, is another one that, that's in this situation. <coughs> Positions are now, we, we talked about earlier this morning, um, directors of racket sports. That's a, that's a trend that's, that's coming. But directors of athletics is another trend that's coming. Um, they would oversee tennis, fitness, other racket sports, aquatics, um, any, other, any other peripheral sports like bocce. Um, croquet. Croquet. Spa. Yeah, spa services. Um, will your new facility include any of that? Yeah, it's supposed to have like Pilates, yoga, yeah. like group exercise. Time. Yeah, every, yeah. I mean, pretty much the concept is everything that you would do in your city, you would do at the country club. So here's a here's a here's a, a, a news flash. Knowing as much about the rest of this operation other than just the tennis is is really going to be important. I found that. Um, General managers are, they're, they're, they're not great at researching these other services they go to. My man, I'll use him as, a, as an example, good guy. He went to the, the CMA World Conference in San Antonio, came back and he had all these great ideas and um, new programming, new games that everybody's playing and, and how big fitness was. You know, and, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday um, it's not about golf. It's, it's not about golf anymore, and that's, that's, that's good news to me. Um, it, it's a little frightening, but the other people who are frightened in this are the club managers, too, because they really are not sure how to proceed. They're, they're, they're kind of steering the Titanic, but they're not sure exactly where it's going to hit and when it's going to hit. Um, the more you can know about this, the better. Now, I'm not saying you have to go out and, and get a bunch of certifications, but the more you know about fitness management, fitness clubs, uh, are you a member of a fitness club? Do you, do you go in your own fitness club? Do you know what kind of equipment you have? I mean, the, you know, little things like that um, are going to uh, be very important. Um, this, this, these pictures here, and there was one in the opening slide, happen to be <coughs> my fitness center. At, at Champion Hills. And we took an existing facility, and, and Rick and I were talking about this uh, a little while ago. Um, we had a very small exercise room up in the clubhouse. We were actually doing group exercise in a ballroom, very similar to the room back here. And they finally made the decision that we needed to give it its, its own space. And of course, coming from a fitness background, I was able to really lend a lot of, uh, well actually, the original structure was done before I was in place. And so they built this facility and um, right now, this was about three, four years ago, and right now we're in the process of figuring out how we're gonna tear it back up and build it bigger. And Rick and I were just talking about this. This is probably the number one mistake that country clubs make is that they, they add fitness facilities. It doesn't sound like that in your case, but they'll add facilities and then they're not big enough or they're not ample enough because what's happening, I think what's happening nationwide, if you were here for the CMA uh, presentation yesterday, you, you got a little bit of this. Clubs are struggling. Demographics are getting older. And so to attract younger members, they have to, they have to, they have to have younger member things and fitness and family uh, um, activities are, are the direction they're going. We're no different. Even though our, our, our demographic is, is, is 65 plus, we have a lot of new younger members coming in. We, saw, we had a member join not too long ago that has kids. I know that sounds odd to you guys, but it's really odd to us to have somebody come in who's got high school age kids. We're not equipped for kids. We don't have one thing in our club other than me and tenant under tennis that can handle a 12 year old child. We don't let them on the golf course. We have a swimming pool, it's part of this facility, um, but we don't have a swim team and we don't have, I mean, it's not like there's a, a big aquatics program for them. 
Um, so this is a trend that's coming. You're in a family club, yeah. Um, quick, it, it, it's quick fit. It, it's quick fitness. Um, it, it's quick hit uh, entertainment. They can do it together. They can do it fast. Um, the 35 to 45 demographic is still working. They're raising families. They've got jobs. They they don't have time to spend seven hours on a golf course. They they, they just don't. Our club is also very expensive. They and typically they, they're not going to have that kind of money. This is this is retired money. This is um, where I am. Um, so fitness is <coughs> peripheral sports. Fitness, tennis are becoming more and more important. So. <coughs> Yeah, like in our club, like it, it wasn't a family club, and they're trying to change it into a family club. Uh -huh. So half of the season members don't want this, yeah. and the and the new members do. Well, I can tell you right now, you're not going that way. The direction you're going, you're going out of business. We're going to go out. Of, I mean, we're not going to go out of business, but this is the model. This we have to we have to go this way, or we won't survive. Golf is not going to save us, and we've got a we've got a beautiful Tom Fazio. Signature golf course. I mean, it is one of his blue chips. It, 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 he's got a home on our golf course, and he builds thousands of golf courses all over the world. And so, uh, it, that's not going to save us. We have to. We have to do other things. So I put together this little presentation. It, this is actually um, more along the lines of actually doing the structures, uh, doing the, putting the programming in place. And I'll just, I'll, I'll just rattle off some of this, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of show you. Um, I've got a couple of pictures here. This, this picture at the top, <coughs> my, my facility is a building, tennis courts across a small parking lot here. The swimming pool is, is in this little complex here. My, my weight room, um, my group exercise room is all in one little campus on the other side of where my club is. It's, it's a, a large parking lot. We sit on the other side of the main clubhouse. So it's almost a, a club within a club. It sits off, you know, it's not part of that structure, which, which I don't know if yours is in the same building As or, main or close, close no, by. We have a whole different clubhouse right. and then the whole different. Right. And, and again, that, that, that lends itself back to what I was saying in that um, this athletic director position is actually a, it's a management position. And, and because the general manager is not going to have time to walk across the parking lot all day long or across the street to look at look at the fitness center. And if they were able to do it, they're probably not going to know a whole lot about what they're looking at. So I detailed out a couple of things. You know, what will your fitness center uh, look like uh, when it's done? <clears throat> what value will, can it offer your members? And I've listed group exercise, um, weight training facility. Um, you know, what kind of weight equipment are you going to buy? Are you going to have a stretch area? Are you going to have a cardio area? Um, what kind of cardio equipment do you intend to buy? Personal training, who's going to do that? What kind of qualifications are they going to have? Are you going to offer any peripheral services like prehab and rehab for surgeries? Again, I'm in a senior demographic. We do more hip and knee business than anybody in town. Um, I do a lot of prehab and rehab work. Um, uh, physical therapy, uh, spa services, you know, the, the camaraderie is really important. One thing that's really interesting, and, and you know, managers love this kind of thing, and I always tell it to people when they do tours through our facility, our little small athletic club is doing exactly what a standalone public athletic club does. It develops windows of the day. So I have groups of people, even though we're, we're a 270, 280 member club, I have people that come in between 5 a.m. and noon, and I have people that come in between 12 and 5, and then I have a few people that come in between 5 and 10. Now, in a senior 65 plus demographic, the numbers are real easy to spot. Um, after 5 o'clock, they're, the, they're, they're in the clubhouse at cocktail hour. They're not, they're not in the fitness center. So um, it's interesting how it has paralleled a standalone athletic club. Some of the things that you're going to need to get started in this, and this is what I was kind of alluding to a little while ago, um, you, you've got to have the desire to get involved in this project. It's when, when you introduce fitness into a country club, especially into a country club environment, um, 
they're not really sure what to make of that. You know, I think Chuck said something the other day. Um, if you would have brought this up 25 years ago, they would have laughed you out of the room. They, they, they weren't putting fitness centers in country clubs, and now they can't do without it. And so now they're scrambling around, especially with old facilities, <coughs> looking for land, looking for spaces to, to put these in. Um, the land around our club is terribly expensive. You know, I've tried to add more tennis courts, and when I go out to talk to vendors, court vendors, about, about adding them, they will go and do a Google Earth search of our property, and they'll find them. And then they'll cut and paste, they'll take two courts and they'll cut and paste them and set them down in the, in the grounds relatively close to our fitness center, because we want to keep everything relatively close together. Well, they've laid these, these courts on a hill that, that goes just like this. And so they can't see the topography from, from that, that view. And so to cut two tennis courts into a hillside that looks like this is a million dollar project. And no one's, no one's gonna do that. So it, there's a lot of legwork that's, that's gonna go into it. And you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna do that. Uh, you're gonna wanna have desire to do this. It, it's, it's a long, tedious process to build a, a, a fitness center in, in, your, in your club. Be a visionary, and I, I, I put this one in there, and Rick, this is what we were talking about a little while ago. Whatever you do, if you add fitness and you have input into it, go to them, take your general manager to the side and say, don't build it too small. If you build it too small, it's, it's, it's just like cutting a pants leg too short. You, you're just not gonna be able to fix that, okay? And that's exactly <laughs> what we've done. That that picture of the construction is, it was three or four years ago, and it's getting ready to look like that again, because we're gonna have to come back and tear just about everything we did up to, to expand it again, because we just we just don't have enough room. It has become extremely popular. Um, in the month of July, and, and I, I think I get to this a little bit later, I track everything. I think Chuck was talking about this in his presentation, but I, I track every detail I can track when they're there, who came in, they sign in, I track the time, group exercise, I track the participation, I know how many numbers, I, I know every class, how many people attended, what my average attendance is, I know what my money looks like. Um, so when it comes to asking for new pieces of equipment or, or an expansion of our, our fitness facility, I've got the numbers. Our numbers are trending just like this. There, in the month of July, I'll have 1,100 visits in my fitness center from a 270 member club of which half of those people don't even know where the fitness center is. So you can see, you can see what's happening. This, this won't fail. This is, a, if you're putting fitness in your clubs, it's a good idea. I know Sophie um, left, she's considering doing it at, at, at her club down in South Carolina. Um, where are you in your, your process? Um, it's a 14 month process, we're in month two. Okay, so you've just broken ground yeah. and you don't have an existing facility. We do, and it was in the dungeon kind of of the country right. club, right? and the members hated it, so they would go join other gyms right. and all that. Right. So, um, and, and our club is only, our tennis facility is only about 15 years old, right? and they can't, couldn't build on top of it, so they just demoed it and started fresh. So your, 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 your fitness center and your tennis center are going to be in the same structure? And a restaurant and pool okay. and everything. Okay, mm -hmm. that's cool. It's, um, they're actually mm -hmm. combining the yeah. whole, it's down in Wilmington, Kansas okay. Country Club. Uh -huh. um, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it was um, quite. And Rick, what are, you, what are you thinking about? What, what are you guys thinking about? We're, um, we're kind of a little bit landlocked. Even though tennis is far away from the club, we have a beach club. We have a pavilion down at the beach club. We have a main clubhouse where golf is, uh -huh. and then tennis is on its own. And I'm trying my hardest to get it like yours, to have tennis and fitness together. Right. And it looks like we may have to just tear our existing tennis shop down mm -hmm. and go up, um, is what we're looking at. Those of you who are in fitness, do you, do you pay attention to what kind of equipment you use, and do you, do you have some that you like better than others? Um, Jenny, what, what do you guys have? Um, well, you know, my situation is a little bit unique because it's a fitness club that has tennis instead of a tennis club that has fitness. Um, I mean, 
our fitness facilities at 105,000 square feet. But I mean, you know, there's tons. It's huge. <laughs> wow. But um, yeah. but it, it is big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's massive. But you know, we we keep with the trends. Like TRX is yeah. huge right now. Uh -huh. Yeah. So so we're getting more TRX. It takes in. space. It takes space to do TRX. Yeah. yeah. So we're getting more of that in all the time. Um, but you can figure out ways to, to cinch it outside. So there, there's TRX all over the grounds right now. Right. You know, but even adding things like paddleboard yoga. Uh -huh. You know, just crazy stuff. Right. But, yeah. right. Um, <coughs> club surveys. Who, who does club surveys? Surveys are, are great barometers. Um, surveys are filled out by people who either love you or hate you. Nobody that sits on the fence fills out a survey. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I think that's uh, that's a big big ticket, big picture item that would probably go out in a survey with um, a lot of other things from your clubs um, to to see if there is a need for fitness. If you're close to your clubs, you, you'll know that you'll you know, you'll hear it all the time. One of the things that we're trying to do at, at, at Champion Hills is that. And I did this at I did this at the Big C Athletic Club out in California. The club itself was a destination. We had everything you could possibly need in a day, other than a hospital if you were a doctor. You could come to our club first thing in the morning. You could connect to the internet and you could answer emails. You could go into the restaurant and have breakfast. You could go back and answer some more emails. You could work out. You could get a haircut, you could get a massage, you could get a facial, you could get your nails done, you could swim, um, you could take a class, you could play tennis, go back to you know, go back and do some more work. Um, we offered a lot of stuff uh, in that club. And so we, we had members who essentially lived there. I mean, they just come in the morning and then see them walk out the door at eight, eight o'clock at night. Um, so, what we're doing at Champion Hills is we're trying to create kind of the same thing. We're we're up on a, up on a hill, up on a mountain, and we're we're not far from town. We're we're you know five, six, seven miles from town. Um, but our members they don't want to go down. They don't want to go down. They don't want to go downtown to get massages. They don't want to go to another athletic club. We have you know we have some younger demographic people in who go into town to do CrossFit. You know, even though they're probably in their forties, um, so we want to. What we're trying to do is, is remedy that, and that's where the next phase of our construction is, is coming from to address spa services. Um, we're talking about adding pickleball. You know, the, you know, a lot of our a lot of our club members come from Florida. And Florida apparently has been the you know has been the culprit as, as, as spreading this propaganda of how great. Pickleball is, and I've, I've I've done I mean I've looked at the videos and I've seen it, and we have a, we have a handful of members that play it. Fortunately for us, we have a park inside of our grounds too. It's a small park. It's not not big. We've got some. Uh, we've got our bocce courts there. We've got um, a little picnic area. We've got some, actually a play structure for grandkids, and so this would be an ideal place to put two pickleball courts. But it's part of our. It's, it's part of our plan. We don't have room for them up at our other facility, but um, again, it's another amenity that we're gonna add to the big picture that's gonna, it's shorter time commitments, it's good athletic work, it's fun, they love it, they don't have to go anywhere. So that's what we're, that's what we're doing. Um, what kind of budget does this project have, do you know? Uh, it's six. Six million. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about what they're doing equipment-wise, as far as like the actual like like life fitness? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Not really at this point. Yeah. Um, but um, and see, that's a that's that's something that um, you could probably be a big help with by learning more about that. Um, it's you know I know that when I when I do these presentations, I, I get a lot of blank looks from people because you know I'm having enough trouble doing my own tennis career, but you know, I, I do both things. I kind of kind of stumbled into it and I've, I've really made the best of it because I have 
you know, when, when, when you guys are, you know, not teaching tennis, if you're in a place that's got climate and, and, and seasons, I'm inside training. I do close to a thousand hours a year of training. That was an hours. That's, that's a lot. Um, so, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing for every 10 hours of, of teaching and training, I'm probably doing seven in the gym and three on the court. I, I would ideally like to have that switched around a little bit, but it's a great problem to have. I mean, it, it's really cut down the wear and tear of my, my body. I've got two replaced hips, and so that, that certainly helps. Um, I have, you know, I have the necessary certifications that I need to do both things. And so it, it, it again, comes back to the club, and, and they're able to save a little money by putting, you know, one person in there to do everything, essentially. Um, so it, it works out pretty good. It, it, it's a great, um, it's turned out to be, you know, a great skill set to have, to be able to do both things, but also in an advisory capacity, it, it's helped there as well. Um, let me just cut, cut through some of this. Now here's a picture, of, um, this is a picture of our current weight room. Um, as I just said, space is at a premium. So if you look at the picture on the on my right, um, Mike, you're coming up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, the the picture on the right is um, basically some older Cybex equipment. We have um, in the last uh, year changed most of that out. We went with the Precore Vitality line uh, or dual line, and the reason why we went with that line is because each of those pieces do two things. So we've got a we've got a um, a leg extension and leg curl machine, for example, an abductor, adductor, uh, lat pull, and a seated row, all in the, in the, they're in the same machine, uh, bicep, tricep machine. Um, so we've, able to, we've been able to pick up quite a bit of space by, by going with those particular lines of equipment. Um, and they, they couldn't be happier. Um, we're still not big enough, though. We're still going to. We're still going to go back and see where that towel rack is. We're going to take, we're going to push back uh, about another 15 feet, and then on this end, we're going to break out into the. We actually share a building with the real estate office uh, at Champion Hills. Um, they're in the other part of this building, and we're in the we're in the left side. They're in the right side. Um, but we're going to they're going to have to go. We just we don't have a choice. Got to go. Yeah. Um, so we talked a little bit about equipment. Any questions about equipment? Is that something, Jenny, you're, you're pretty keen on? Yeah, I, I think it makes a big difference in numbers for sure. Do you know how many square feet you added when they added on to the pro shop? Around, around about? Or how many square feet you have? Well, with yeah, the, the, the current facility is about, um, 20, 2,500, mm -hmm. including the group exercise room, which is just large enough for about 12 to 15 <coughs> participants. Um, and we're going to add probably close to another 1,000 feet if we can get the real estate office out. You said your, your club is mostly seniors, but yes. like your club, how did, what is your, um, like your age limit? You know, because like we have like high performers, 13, uh -huh. 14, 15 year olds, yeah. and you know, like the rule of who can go in there unassisted, who cannot go in there. Um, they they have it at 12, 12. but we we kind of have some. We have a little bit of wiggle room if they're with right. a trainer. I got you. Well, I like that's a good question. Yeah. I know when I was playing like junior tennis in the collegiate league, there was more focus on like free weights and stuff like that. Um, th as age changed, is it more like machine focused? Is it safer? Or is it well, it's, 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 it is yeah. safer. I mean, the equipment's gotten better over the years, but, you know, I was, I was just saying a lot ago, um, you know, I'm doing my um, master certification with the ITPA, and the first two modules of that are plyometrics, which is movement uh, using weighted ball, bands, that kind of thing, um, and Olympic lifting. You know, Olympic lifting always gets left out of tennis, and, and no one really pays much attention to it, but that's, that's the number one power source and, and that we use for competitive, high-performance players. So that's why I was asking, I know, yeah. collegiately, that was some of the stuff that, that we did, and I don't know, I mean, I don't trust 
say anything, but I'm, yeah. I can't get your 50 year olds doing you know, snatch squats or nothing, but maybe they do, or maybe they don't. Or in a modified form. Okay. In a modified form. Yeah. Do you see at your club with that AG membership more of a trend going towards the machines as opposed to free weights? Um, yeah. Yeah, they do. Mostly for simplicity. Right. Um, our, the, that dual line uh, equipment is very easy to use. It's very easy to access. Um, they can do all the adjustments yeah, very minimal. Yeah. Put bars and stuff. You know, it's funny too. And, and along the same lines, when I when I got when I got entrenched there and, and, and started developing the facility for them, um, I made it a point to. Um, I, I just happened to use Precore. I, I like Precore. Uh, I think I, I mentioned this earlier. I went to Precore this year and spent three days there training in the factory um, on on the cardio equipment, the strength equipment, on how to maintain it and, and, and management uh, and, and uh, work on it because I was getting taken advantage of by my service providers for the equipment. They come in and they fart around there for 20, 30 minutes and charge me four or five hundred dollars and. You know, I wasn't getting what I what I thought I should get out of it, and so I fired three of them and just said I'm gonna do it myself. So they have a, a training program in pre corps in Greensboro, and I spent three days there training with two of the, um, the, the you know teachers there, and uh, it, it, it's extremely valuable. It's, it's valuable to me, and it's valuable to the club. I mean, now they don't have that quarterly service fee to pay out, so. Any questions about that? That was, that was, that was kind of cool. Yeah, I actually, you, know, you took over the preventive maintenance on yeah. all the machines? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're a rock star. I went out and uh, <laughs> I, I was able to find, you know, I went to like a, a Harbor Tools type place and, and created my own tool basket with everything I needed to remove shrouds and, and, and you know, meters to check connectivity and, and the cardio equipment. Um, you know, they, it really wasn't that complicated, and I, and you know, if you get into this situation and you start, um, you know, helping, you know, try to find service providers for that, you, you gotta, you gotta pay close attention to that. That's one of those little underbelly items that'll sneak right by you, and these guys will show up, and and you're in the middle of your teaching, or you're doing an appointment, or you've got something else going on, and you know, you see them show up, and then next thing you know, there's a bill under your door for you know, four or five hundred dollars for preventive maintenance, but they're already gone. And and so I, I you know I started you know paying a little bit closer attention to it and looking at what they were doing and um, and I, I, I didn't like what I what I saw because you know all the equipment you buy has a serial number, has an age, it has an age, you know, you, you and you have to um, you have to pay attention to that. Um, so and you have to pay attention to the preventive maintenance and I'm getting a little bit off track there but um, does that, that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. Sure. Um, understand how a weight room is laid out. I, I've got this right here and I don't want to get in the way again. Um, understand power requirements. You know, a lot of it's become a little bit more power friendly. Um, treadmills, for example, need designated lines. You know, you can't go in and plug an iPod in or a TV and a treadmill and put a rope plug with 15 things on it. I mean, you'll, you'll blow the place up. So it, it, there is, there is a, a method to the madness. Um, you know, how are you going to set the room up? Where's your cardio equipment going to be? One of the things I love, I was in, um, I was in Dallas uh, earlier in the year at, um, at the Northwood Club. And they just got through building a, 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 a big brand new fitness center. And of course, if you can do this, it's great. Check out what you're in Florida, you may have done this too. You know, you always want to aim your, your cardio equipment, your treadmills and your bikes and stuff looking out a window. And if you've got a great view, you know, we don't, unfortunately, where we're positioned, I mean, you saw the picture of the mountains in the first, I mean, we'd love to have our fitness center pointed point toward that, but so would every homeowner up there, you know. So if you can, you know, you know, point your cardio equipment out a window and um, have a nice view, it, it works out really well. Um, TVs, you know, I always tell people, I've done a, a few consults with, uh, with clubs who are building fitness facilities. And I always tell them the same thing. The two mistakes that everybody makes, the two things that they don't pay enough attention to, hardwired clocks and TVs. Hardwired clocks and TVs. There is nothing on earth that drives club members crazy, crazier than having clocks that are different. 
especially when it comes to classes. Um, they get there and this, this one says nine o'clock and this one over here says 9.15. It, it, it's maddening. And I, I've just, over my career, I, I found that just to be really, really important. TVs, when your TVs don't work, that's another one that will absolutely drive them insane. Um, you gotta pay attention to it. You've gotta position your TVs so that as many people as possible can view them. Um, we happen to have, you know, we're, again, we're small, but we have four, three, three TVs in front of our cardio equipment. We use the broadcast vision unit down there on the right. And so there's basically three channels and they can watch one of the three TVs, but they use, you know, they use their own headphones. And it, it's, it's actually nowadays, it's, it's, this is kind of archaic, but it's simple and they understand it. And with my demographic, what I was gonna say a few minutes ago, is that that's why I went with pre-core equipment because they've all got the same panel boards. So if they come in and they, they know where the quick start button is on all the, all the pieces. So it's simple and that's, that's why I did it that way. These little units here are the same way. There's, there's basically three channels, a volume control, and they're on the happy way. So very simple. Um, then we come to the equipment. There's so many choices out there. I, I've been fortunate enough to go to the uh, URSA trade show a number of times, um, which is absolutely mind-boggling. Um, the, the ones that come to mind are the ones at Moscone Center. If you've ever been out to San Francisco, um, Moscone Center is an absolute massive um, exposition hall. It's in two pieces. There's one piece on one side of the street, one on the other, and typically they will fill both of those up. I mean, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of manufacturers of everything you can possibly think of that would go in a fitness center. Um, so understanding the equipment is, is a biggie, and it will be a big help to your club to, to, to really know um, uh, which equipment you need to buy. Um, what would another factor be with the equipment? Who cleans it? Well, yeah, cleaning it. The maintenance of the equipment's big, but like for example, um, we talked about the simplicity of the machines uh, and not getting too complicated. Your age of member is gonna matter too. You wanna make sure that you get you know, age appropriate you know, equipment, stuff that's not too complicated, real simple to use based on, uh, on your membership demographic. Your trainers, you know, there's so many different um, training um, uh, certification entities out there. Um, do you know, do you have fitness people in place now? We have one lady, but uh, it's, I think it's like a contract, you know, like a contract. You know, she, she no, no idea what she's certified. Yeah. Jenny, what do you guys do? Um, Lifetime actually has their own um, certification yeah. that, that right. people that have the other ones come in, but they have to go through the, the mm -hmm. Lifetime. Right. Too. The bigger chains do that, 24-hour fitness does that, I believe, and Rush might do that as well. Um, Chuck, what are your guys? We've got about 12 trainers, and they're all employees. Converted. Um, certification, so they all oh, uh, the same. They all have to be ACE or NASM. Okay, okay, and I've got some of those logos here. NASM, ISIS logo there, ACE is on there as well. Um, certification, just like it is in tennis, is, is very important. Um, uh, especially if you're going to um, <coughs> special demographics, seniors, um, prehab and rehab work, um, they're going to need to understand how to, how to manage those types of people. Great services though. Um, how are you going to maintain your equipment? Um, one of the things I did when I, when I started doing the preventive maintenance is I took photographs of all of my, all of my pieces. I went painstaking through weight room. Serial numbers, model numbers. Um, went through all of it, created an operations manual um, that I can keep. If GM walks in at any times, you know what's what's the equipment look like. I can go to the pages and, and pull all that and pull all that up. Uh, and what I also like about doing it myself is I can, I can do it whenever I want to do it. You know, I'm not I'm not held hostage by a, a guy. Well, I can, I can be there next Friday. At, five o'clock when I'm not there and watching. So that's that's why I've taken sort of taken that away from it. Um, because I put here learn how to do that yourself. 
Um, one of the things too that, that um, when I went to pre core and got certified as a technician, um, I'm now allowed to buy parts from pre core directly, which is going to save money. So there's no middleman now. There's no extra extra money to pay um, to pay for the parts, and I know how to put them in. So it's all good. Checklist. Um, you guys, you, I know the big clubs use checklists. This is a biggie. Um, checklist for cleaning. Checklist for front desk people. Um, Faisal was just talking about that a little, a little while ago. These will be um, invaluable. Locker room checklist. Um, group <coughs> exercise checklist. This happens to be one that um, that I developed uh, at the club and, and use uh, myself. So, group exercise. Group exercise, and this is um, construction of the group exercise room on the left, uh, the middle, and then the finished product on the right. Um, one interesting note about the group exercise room, it's a, it's a fairly um, sizable room. We, we limit our participation in that room to about 15. That's, that's the max we can really get in there comfortably. But I also had this room set up with that large screen TV there because I also do a wellness seminar series during the summer months. And so once a month, we'll have area physicians, health providers come in and they will speak to our club members. They don't, don't charge anything for that. Um, they're glad to do it. It's great. It's, it's a great business tool for them. I've had orthopedic surgeons. I've got later in the month, I've got a dermatologist coming in. In fact, a new dermatologist to the area coming in. And um, I mean, this will be a great way for him to start building his, his client base. Um, uh, podiatrist, um, like I said, orthopedic surgeon, cardiologist, dietitians, um, nutrition experts. Um, so that's a, that's another great use uh, for that room. Group exercise programs, yoga, Pilates, um, Tai Chi, jazzercise, uh, Nia. Um, we've got a, a good, well-rounded program, well attended, and. And it, and it does fine, and actually, it, uh, it actually makes a little money too. So you charge for those? Yes. What do you charge? We have a um, a, a typical class is twelve dollars if you just come walk in. Uh, we do have tiered buying cards, electronic cards that you can buy in 10, 20, 30, and fifty class increments, bringing the class from uh, cost from twelve down to as little as seven if you if you buy them in in bulk. And we've got husbands and wives that do both things as well. So, uh, and how about having to pay for the speaker that's just revenue for the club? Speaker what? The, 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 the person who's coming in for the wellness the no, instructor. The instructor. No, no, there's no charge for that. Okay, so yeah. there's some additional revenue for the club. That right, right. The group exercise, we do have to pay instructors. Right. Yeah. How do you manage sign-ups or registrations? Like how far? Online. They can do it online. They can do it online and they can walk in. We have Club Essentials as our club management software, which is not great. It's confusing to them. Um, and therefore, I, you know, I just allow them to come in and sign in. I will develop a sign-in sheet from the, from the program before the class, put it in the room. And so, you know, I know who signed up online. And then um, they can come in and just sign in. And I use that sign-in sheet as my um, accounting sheet. I uh, have their physical signature on it. Um, I can debit their electronic cards from it. Uh, use it as backup document in case Mrs. Smith says, well, I wasn't there on Tuesday. Here it is right here, you signed in. So, um, like I said, I'm kind of anal about tracking stuff, and this is just one more, one more thing that we do. Because when you start, again, when, when the general manager wants to know what's going on in group exercise, You'll have all the numbers. I, you know, my average attendance in in my my classes is, or I can pick out yoga classes, for example, and I can tell them what my average attendance is. I can tell them what the high and the low is, and, and give them all the data. We really want to hear. <coughs> Again, more information about um, uh, group exercise. We do a we do a yoga for <coughs> men class, which is extremely popular. Uh, a lot of the golfers, you know, come into that. We also offer the Titles Performance Institute um, golf fitness program. Um, I um, I did get certified in TRX as well, and that was brutal. That was the ugliest thing I did all year long. 
I had to go down. To, in fact, I wasn't far from here. I was at the, the Valentine YMCA. And uh, it was me and maybe one or two other guys and about 20 hard body, you know, 20 year old girls. And, you know, they're, they're, they're putting their feet up in the, in the uh, stirrups and doing all the, you know, flipping over. And I'm, can you help me get my feet in that? <laughs> so, uh, I'm sorry. Can you help me get my feet out of it? <laughs> so that was that was fun. Um, again, you've got logistical issues that'll that'll be involved with it as well. We happen to have 24/7 security. You know what kind of um, entry are you going to have in that facility? Uh, when is it open and closed? Who does that process? Card entry, key entry, video surveillance sign-in and usage logs, which I told you, monthly and annual reports um, that I always keep. Um, how many answer to a fitness or tennis committee? Anybody answer to those guys? Yeah. Um, I don't know what your roles, what their roles are in the operation. Ours are typically um, and, and strictly advisors. They don't make decisions, they just advise. And to be honest with you, I'm the expert in the room. So I go in and tell them what they, what they need to do, they pretty much will agree. Um, and of course, financial uh, information as well, you'll, you'll need to keep up with. Um, okay, Rick, this was, this was one I put in here just for you. Um, <coughs> this is where everybody seems to make mistakes. If, you, if you're thinking about putting fitness in your, in your club, in your facility, go to whoever's in charge of it, you know, express an interest in it and go, whatever we do, don't build it too small. Because that's way more trouble than it's worth. You need to, you need to have vision with this, look out in the distance, um, take a look at your membership sale trends, um, you know, evaluate upcoming programs, things that you might have on the horizon, any other expansions of the club that might draw members, new members in, and, and build your facility accordingly. Um, that's where long range planning comes in. Um, start building your, uh, you, know, you know, again, start building your vision. Figure out what you want to be. And this is, this is something I go through, I'm sure you, you guys go through it too. How many of you have a five year plan? We got a five year plan, we got a 10 year plan. I got a five year plan. I, I just tell people, I got a five year plan, I keep picking up, moving down every year. Um, we were talking about financials the other day, and, and this has really been a, 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 a real sore spot with me and, and where I am now. We have money, we're not, we're, not, we're not broke, we're not going out of business, but in all honesty, we have not planned for the future very well. Um, we, have, uh, you know, we have reserve funds in place, and if push came to shove, we could just do an assessment and ask for whatever we need to, to pull us out of the hole. We are a debt-free community. How many of you can say that? The OG clubs owe money? We don't. We don't know a dime. And that's, that's, that's one of the selling points of, of our club, um, th that it is a debt-free community. Um, that comes with a price tag, though, believe it or not. Um, you don't get to just kind of do what you want whenever you want to do it. And I, when I was in California, and I, you know, I always tag that story with this story, I worked for a billionaire. Anybody ever worked for a billionaire? I know that one of the manager works for Trump, but that's cool because you don't, you and I will never worry about the same things. He comes in and says, I want this, get rid of that, take that down, I want it down by the end of the day, get rid of it. And you just, and you just kind of do it. Um, he used to come to me with the most bizarre request you could possibly imagine. He bought a, he bought, I bought him a, I, you know, I have to do it for him. I bought him a, like a $10,000 Woodway treadmill to put on the deck of a boat that he owned. It was a it was a yacht that he owned called Crystal. And uh, um, I said okay. So then he then he comes back and he says the boat. I'm in California. The boat is docked up near Seattle, and we're leaving on Sunday. It's Friday. I want the treadmill on the deck by the time the boat leaves. So I bought a $10,000 treadmill over the phone. I had it shipped overnight from 
I can't remember where Woodway is, Midwest or somewhere. I had a crane lifted off of the, off the deck onto the, the bow of that ship. It took off on Sunday, and I'll bet you a nickel to a dollar he did not put five miles on that treadmill. Probably was Steve Jobs? No, it was Ken Hoffman. He owned the Oakland and the Seattle Seahawks. So it, it was um, that, kind of, that kind of nonsense. So when, you, when you're in that kind of environment, you don't really worry about the same things. But, you know, we used to do a, uh, interesting, we used to do a, what we call the close down of our club. We would close our club for two weeks every year in August. It was an 80, about an 85,000 square foot club. You know, it was a monster. And not compared to you guys, but it was big for us. We would close it down. Everybody still paid dues like they normally do. And we would just absolutely top to bottom, front to back, strip it completely bare. And, and paint, capital projects, new equipment came in, on and on and on. The, the project would run anywhere from, you know, maybe a couple of hundred thousand dollars to over a million dollars. And we'd do all that in two weeks and then reopen it. And so when the members came back, they had a, they had a brand new club. I mean, it was, it was really kind of cool. We did that every year. Um, so, interesting. And this is sort of what it looks like today. All that construction you saw um, down in the bottom left. Um, you walk down that, that hallway, actually that big boulder on the left there, Billy, that's the one I was showing you. We actually picked that boulder up and moved it. We have the construction guys move it because it, it sits, we were sitting back a little bit further. We, we moved it up to the front. But what will happen eventually is that first entrance on the right, where the first set of roof, roofing is, that will become the entrance way to the fitness center. And so that's where the real estate office is now. So their reception area will become ours, and then the rest of the building all the way back um, will become the rest of it. Um, the fitness center as it, as it exists today is group exercise room. And uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of what it is. Um, questions? Any other questions? You guys have 24 seven access to your fitness center? Uh, no, actually we don't. Uh, we open at 5 a.m. and we close at 10, seven days a week. Um, the only time it's not open, obviously after those hours, but um, in the case of weather, it's really the only time security opens and closes it. So, is it manned and staffed all that time, or is it key access you can get in? No, it's it's it's. I'm there probably you know anywhere between 11 and 12 hours a day, um, but other than that, it's it's not it's not manned. Other than security watch. Anything else? Makes sense? Big, it's a big project. I know kind of in the setting of most gyms, you know, like you have your couple guys who like to work out together kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, how do you accommodate like guest fees? Because if you work out at Golden's Gym with your buddy from work who's not a member of the club, right. but you want him to work out with you, do you go find a member to work out with or do you allow a guest fee? No, fortunately for us, we don't, we don't we don't really agonize over that. Members are allowed to um, bring in guests to the fitness center. We don't charge the guests to to use the facility. Um, typically, um, they are with the member when they right. come in. We have situations where um, if Rick owns a house and he's away for a couple of months in the summer, and I want to rent that house, I can rent that house, which would also rent my that access is. to here. Right. Um, and so that's that's the way we, we do that. Anything else? Yeah. And as someone who's got no experience in say fitness certification uh -huh. or anything, if someone wants to get started in something like that, I mean, I haven't looked into it in the past, but moving forward if I would, where do you even start with something like you, that? You just do an online search. I mean you can, I mean you could just go online, fitness certifications and see what comes up. NASM, ACE, ISA, um, they're all gonna you know, they're all gonna pop up mm -hmm. in there. They're going to be different prices. They're going to take different time um, commitments. Um, I think I did my my ISA fitness certification in about um, I don't know maybe two months, three months, somewhere in there, um, and then I had a, a fair amount of practical um, work I had to do. Same with my senior fitness certification. The ITP master certification is a little bit a little bit longer. Um, it took uh, for my CTPS was. I don't know, maybe uh, three months, maybe. Uh, it varies because when you get busy, 
you're not going to be able to spend hour after hour after hour on it, so then it gets a little bit skewed. The master certification is a little bit different. There are several different modules with that. Like I said, I'm doing plyometrics and the Olympic lifting now. Um, I'll go to Atlanta in July and, and, and do the other uh, modules there. I'm also speaking at their, their um, world conference on uh, training seniors, I think. Um, and then after that part of the module, there's another set of modules that have to be completed. So that one's going to take probably about five to six months, maybe a little bit longer, to, to do that one. Well, within that industry, what uh, what is what what accreditation would you say is the most uh, respected? Um, it's it's interesting, you know, ACE, AFA, NASM, um, ISA gets high marks. Um, it's it, it's really what what you want to do. You just want to make sure that. That, the, that there are um, that they're accepted, accredited, and, um, and and really provide the information that you need within your club if you're if you're overseeing that, monitoring that, um, and make sure it's adequate enough to, to train the people. Are are any of those in that industry considered um, just a you can go buy a certification? No, I, I when I went through the ISA certification, and it's probably. Um, it's probably not the not the lower tier, but but probably under NASM and ACE and, and those guys just barely. Um, it was it was extremely difficult. I mean, it was it was hard to do. I mean, the, the workbooks, the manual, the, the textbook for that that course is, is this thick. I mean, it's it, it's a lot to do. Um, and I'm sure the other ones are are, are <coughs> different. Um, you're not gonna you're not gonna skip pages and get by that. You just it's just not gonna happen that way. There's a there's just like the USPTA test. There is um, you know there's live testing, um, written test, practical um, test where you have to um, identify. They give you a situation and you have to identify how to address it and train certain certain things. Yeah. At the world <coughs> I went to the world conference in uh, Saddlebrook, and I went to a a, a a class where the lady did some cardio tennis drills and then she incorporated more fitness style exercises for seniors it seemed like they were out there. I don't know if you were at that demonstration or whatever. Do you incorporate that at your tennis facility? Oh yeah. On court. Yeah we use TRX. Um, we, TRX. Use, we use the rip trainer um, which is a, um, a bungee type type cord. And I you know I always did when I did the, the, the presentation um, build them when they will come. Um, it's really about moderation uh, modification. Um, you have to modify the exercises to accommodate that age demographic. And I make my ladies, 3 old players, you know, I make them do lateral movements, do ladders, you know, and they're, they're well over 60, 60 years old. Um, and they handle it pretty well. Um, I, I, when I do um, um, hand feeding drills with them, um, I would do that very similar to the way that I would, I would train a high school or high performance player. Um, I just don't go to the extreme um, and make it easier easier for them to, to be able to, to handle. But um, I've got I've got clients that are I've got, my oldest client is 88, and he can stand on I mean he can stand on this the 25 exercises when I've, I've done a couple of times. I've, I've pulled somebody out. We used the balance disc and, and done some work. I don't know if you guys have seen that one, but um, I've had you know I've had young 25 year olds you know. Dan Beadle was one of, the, one of the guys I had help me, and he really struggled with that. Um, and I've got 80 year olds that can essentially do that better. Um, they'll stand on the balance disc and they'll do rotational movements, catch bowl, pass balls back and forth. I mean, it's great training for them. Um, it's good for their balance, good for the stability. Well, like, you know, like if, if I'm certified in USPTA, PTR, I tell the members their answer is okay. You know, like, yeah. is there a certain. Um, Certification that gives you more general knowledge to a club atmosphere versus, you know, like if you get certified in TRX, does like that ISSA teach a little bit of everything, or does you know, like, is there a certification you can get that covers a wider range? Just of a general general fitness certification, I would say. I mean, I I specifically got another senior fitness certification because of the demographic I work with, but I think a lot of it is going to be up to you. I mean, you're going to take a, a fairly um, 
broad framework of, of exercise knowledge and, and training knowledge, and then you're going to apply that to your particular membership, which may be different than the group you're with or you're with your uh, that I'm with, and that's where the real creativity I think comes in, and that's that's what I I, I think that's what I've been able to do effectively where I am, taking this this big basket of fitness knowledge and applied it to a to a senior demographic. And it's, it's, it's been a great, I mean, it's been a great ride. I mean, it's, it's been a, a big service. Great have you, service have you ever had a situation where your tennis instructors are fitness certified, but it overstepped the grounds of the fitness instructors? That, you know, that would be me. Yeah. Yeah, that would be me. Um, like where, you know, let's say the member wants the tennis instructor to give the fitness lesson, but the fitness instructors come it, in it, and say, this is my it'll, area. It'll happen. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when, I, when I went to the, yeah. um, you know, when I went to the, the ITPA World Conference in Atlanta, you know, it's funny, the groups that are there, the people that are there watching that, the, the, the smallest percentage of, of people that are there are tennis pros. They're fitness professionals, they're physical therapists, they're orthopedic surgeons, um, and there's, there's very few tennis pros that are there. Um, so, being able to you know, kind of work together. My golf pro, my golf, I did a TPI program with my golf pro, and he, I mean, he, he's, a, he's a CrossFit guy, but he would know the first thing about working on, working on the stuff I do with other with golfers. Yeah. <coughs> At that point, um, is we, we oversee, oversee tennis and fitness <coughs> and spa, and then we have a golf department. So when you collaborate with TPI, and your golf instructors, you really need to be careful. Of, I would suggest being very careful about making sure that your trainers understand that they're they're there to talk about the exercise and they're to, they're to train the, the member in range of motion. And what happened with one of our trainers is he's also a free handicap, so he suddenly thinks that he can teach golf, right. and he's not a PGA pro. Right. So he was on the he was on the range showing members some exercise, and the next thing you know, he's walking down the range. Giving golf, giving golfers tips on right. on their backswing and their stance, and the, and the PGA guys obviously went to be that shit crazy. You know, nuts! What's he doing over there? So, and the, it's great when you can collaborate, but you want to kind of set aside some barriers. And some yeah, it's a it can be a slippery slope. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna have to you know when you get the training knowledge, then you're gonna have to kind of stand back from it and look at each individual client. You know, I've got. I say I do a, a thousand hours a year. I've got a, a, a bin and I've got boxes and boxes of programs that, that I, I've just kept, you know, from clients. Because every time one of my clients comes in, that program is different. It's it's different. It's gonna have <coughs> some little thing that's different to it, but it's a fresh sheet with changes on it that may have come up from the last program. And so it changes constantly. And and that's where you you know you come in, you change with it. Um, and that's really why they're coming to you, to improve, you know, improve their strength, improve their flexibility. You're going to be taking notes on, on their pro their progress, and so it, it really is important. Yep. Now just the last thing to kind of piggyback on what you're saying. There, there, there are incredible synergies between your tennis operation and your fitness operation. For example, your best source of new tennis players can be from a senior who's just starting to exercise again and feeling good about it and wants to do something different. Never even thought they could play tennis, but if you have a, a, a nice relationship with personal trainers who go, you know what, it's kind of boring to ride the treadmill uh, five days a week. Why don't you take up tennis and do a do the beginner program or with Chuck a couple of days? And then conversely, you might have the, the you know, the 3.5 guy who just is, incredibly overweight and doesn't move very well. And you can say, you know what, I'm kind of taking it about as far as I can with lessons. You might really benefit more at this point by spending a, doing a, a three week training session with one of our trainers. And then you're cross to selling one, one another, it's a home run. And that's exactly what your managers are looking for. That's what those guys were up here talking about the other day. And creativity, uh, extended programming, creative programming, that, that's what they want. I mean, ours is ours is kind of one-stop shopping. I mean, it's, they can come and they can get the tennis and they can get the fitness and then you get the golf fitness. I got one lady. I tell us real quick. I've got one lady who is a um, I train that is a world-class, one of the best in the world at it. Horse and buggy driver. 
competitive horse and buggy driver. She, she comes into a big ring and she does this, this thing. It, 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 it's the most bizarre thing you'd ever want to see. But she has to sit in a stable, seated position being hauled around by a 3,000 pound horse for almost 15 straight minutes. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, that's, that's tough to do. Um, and she's 66. Yeah, I don't think I can do it. So, thank you guys. I appreciate it. I've got some cards here. Have questions or